And I want to start with a demonstration using this soda can. By rubbing the PVC pipe, I'm giving it a negative charge, and I'm able to pull the can from one side of the desk to the other. In this case, the electrons in the can move away from the charged pipe. Now let's try it with a positive charge. Once again, we see the can being attracted through the process of induction. This time the electrons in the can are attracted, so they move towards the glass. Static charge. Now here's the standard demonstration, but I'd like to try some variations. For example, how can we get the stream to be repelled rather than attracted? And what would happen with two streams? The process is actually called induction. Now when I rubbed that balloon on my hair, I gave it a negative charge. But the wall is actually an insulator, much like the styrofoam cup is. Now if I take this glass and I rub it with Orlon, I'm going to give it a charge. And watch what happens when I bring it near these small pieces of foam. So originally designed to detect and measure static charges. This one has two pieces of aluminum foil hanging down from wires attached to a bolt, comes up through the center, and has a large metal ball sitting on top of it. Let's try it with a negative charge. Once again, we have a polarization of the electrons away from that negative charge. Start out by testing the salt. I bring a negative charge near it, and some of the salt particles are attracted to it. We'll try it again with a positive charge, and if you look closely, we'll see that some of the particles hit the strip and then bounce off. Now let's try it again with some sugar. We'll try it with a positive charge, and we'll see some of the sugar is actually going to collect on the bottom of the strip. There we go. Now let's try it with a negative charge. I don't know how they behave on the table, but I think it's more interesting if we allow them to fall as a stream. 